Well, the flu virus is a continuously evolving uh, virus. It undergoes mutations every year and that makes it a shifting target for the immune system. And our antibodies that recognize influenza virus and protect us against infection are very effective when they match the surface structures on the surface of the virus. But when those surface structures change, the antibodies become less effective, less protective. And once every few decades, the surface structures change radically because they become incorporated from influenza viruses infecting pigs or birds. And when that occurs, our antibodies don't recognize the virus at all any longer. But fortunately, the immune system has two limbs. Uh, one limb is the antibodies. The other limb is uh, T cells or the cellular immune system. And unlike the antibodies, the T cells recognize the internal core components of the virus. When the 2009 pandemic struck, we had to act very quickly to recruit a cohort of healthy volunteers here at Imperial College, staff and students, and follow them up through two pandemic waves with the new virus. The study was, was uh, really easy from a, a user's point of view. What they asked me to do was uh, to take uh, several blood samples, which I was happy to provide. Um, if I did get ill, to provide a, a nasal swab and also fill in a, a, a symptom score sheet. Uh, lucky for me, I remained asymptomatic through the whole study, so I didn't have to do a lot. So I think I sent in two um, swabs and one, uh, the whole family was quite sick with flu-like symptoms. So we had uh, sore throats, we had uh, runny nose, fever, headaches, uh, so all the flu-like symptoms, quite nasty um, flu for about a week. Yeah, I was surprised to find out that I, I was uh, infected because uh, for memory during this period I was, uh, I, I, I don't remember getting any influenza-like illness. I remained completely asymptomatic despite the fact that people around me were getting uh, what appeared to be influenza-like illness. I, I thought I had appeared to avoid it. When we took these blood samples we tried to analyse them and ask why were some people getting flu and getting some symptoms with flu and other people were completely asymptomatic like Mike. And when we looked at Mike and Cecilia's cells, it turned out that people like Mike who were completely asymptomatic, had a lot of these CD8 positive T cells. So when we unblinded the results, we found firstly that the vast majority of people do indeed have T cells that are able to recognize the new pandemic strain, the core of the new pandemic strain, even though they've never seen that strain before. Secondly, we found that the higher the frequency of T cells that people had, the less likely they were to develop symptoms when they got infected with pandemic flu. So these results provide the blueprint for developing a universal influenza vaccine because we now know that T cells can protect. We know exactly which subtype or subgroup of T cells is associated with this protection. And we also know what the targets of these T cells are. We actually know precisely which conserved peptides or constituents of the core of the virus are targeted by these protective T cells. So all of this means we can now move forward to develop a universal influenza vaccine. Such a vaccine, if it works, would reduce symptoms and transmission or infectiousness during seasonal influenza every year, but it will be able to protect populations against future pandemic strains, some of which are likely to be quite deadly.